Hey guys, if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for links to some great online retailers. There's also individual links for knives that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube Middle Complex here and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Microtech DOC or DOC which stands for Death on Contact apparently. It's important to remember I'll be reviewing this reviewing this uh, item as a utility cutting tool only uh, despite the implications of the name. This knife was sent to me and donated to the channel by at Mike, C-O-U-C-O-U-L-E-S. I'm spelling it because I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm so sorry, Mark. Uh, but uh, give him a follow on Instagram. This guy's a wonderful person. He's been a patron for a long time. And this came out of nowhere. He was just like, keep it. That's really nice. Especially, he was like, keep it and do whatever you want with it. Um, thank you so much, Mike. That's really nice of you. I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. Give him a follow. Uh, thank you so much to all of my generous patrons who are supporting me right now. If you'd like to get your hands on some cool stickers and some other benefits, there's, of course, a link down in the description. And if you'd like, follow me, too, on Instagram. Okay, let's go ahead and get a measurement. I think it's important to point out that this model is actually um, a 2013 model. 154 cm is what this was coming in, but the newer ones, as far as I can tell, are unchanged, other than the fact that they come in LMAX. And knowing Microtech probably M390 and 204P and they rotate, maybe some S35 EN. I know that they use all of those steels periodically. So, but everything else appears to be unchanged. The other mystery surrounding this knife is whether or not it will ever be available again. I mean, I see this periodically, it's neat. And then they're like gone forever. And then they come, they kind of come back. I don't know. You know, Microtech knives do that. Uh, I know for a fact that the Scarab OTF is discontinued and some other interesting Microtech models, but as far as whether or not this will be available again anytime soon, uh, you know, based on the time of this video, I have no idea. Absolutely no idea. I'll provide links where you can go look if you want to, as well as Microtech knives in general, because they do make good stuff, so you can check those out if you want to. This is a collaboration, I'm sure you can tell, between uh, Microtech uh, knives and uh, uh, Strider knives. Um, this is uh, very much a, an SNG meets like very tactical, very futuristic Microtech knife. And they've added a flipper to it um, and some other interesting elements. So that's why, if it looks familiar, that's probably why. Overall length is coming in at nine inches. My goodness, that's not counting the lanyard thing back there. Blade length is coming in at four inches. Cutting edge coming in at three and a quarter because we have a huge forward choil and sharpening choil there. That's fine, still plenty of blade. And I love Strider Ergos, we'll talk about that. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1. You can see there, this is a big knife. The Rat 1's coming in at 8.6 inches overall. How about up against the Spyderco PM2? Spyderco PM2 is coming in at 8.3 inches overall. How about up against the Benchmade Reptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue? Ritter Hogue coming in at eight inches overall. And last but not least, the Spyderco Para 3. Para 3 is coming in at seven and a quarter inches overall. Let's do one more size comparison. I got a knife that'll be beneficial for some people. I've got a uh, Protex Strider SNG, which is exactly the same length and the handle shape and position of the choil are exactly the same as a Strider SNG. Um, so it'll serve as an SNG comparison for anybody who owns that knife and is curious about the dock or somebody who owns the dock and is curious about the SNG. There you go. SNG comes in at about eight and a quarter. You can see there are differences in the overall blade profile and grind. Uh, the SNG does not have a flipper tab. In this case, it's an automatic, but the standard SNG does not have a flipper tab. And also there's a, a couple of differences in the shape of the, um, the handle. Absolutely. All right. Let's go ahead and talk about the action on this guy. It's honestly pretty impressive because this knife is from 2013. Disengaging it, there is a little bit of a double clutch here. By that, I mean the point where the detent ball wants to ride up on the face of the blade is right about where the flipper tab contacts your finger, and that can be problematic. But again, this design, well, actually, I can't give it too much slack there because uh, as far as I know, things are unchanged between this and, and the 20, is there a 2020 model? I don't know, 2019, maybe it was the last time they made this. A uh, little bit of a double clutch, but here's the thing. I've handled... Microtex and other knives from 2013 that are flippers that just feel weak in the detent. That was a common thing. The detents weren't quite perfect. ZT had nailed it, and there were other companies that were kind of figuring it out. Microtech had some knives that did it well, and other knives were, eh, you know, this runs on bearings, and it does flip. 
I think it more so has to do with the weight and mass of the blade and the shape of the flipper tab. There's plenty of leverage there, but honestly, the detent's not heavy, but it does click into place. It's one of those where if you want to, it can be shaken out, which is nothing that you, here's the thing. If the blade is almost falling out, the detent's too weak. Like the Spyderco Python, detent's too weak. This is a heavier detent than the Python. Flip, whipping the knife out is never, like people who see this and they're like, oh gosh, it's not a quality. No, don't pay attention to that. Um, if the if the blade is almost falling out on its own, um, then that's a problem. But this, it's fine. It's going to stay in there for the most part, unless you plan on sprinting with it in your pocket. Um, you know, in which case, choose something else. But yeah, you're going to be just fine. The detent's okay. But yeah, the action is quite impressive. Um, I still have, the, uh, I did this the same day that I did the RKO review, so I unfortunately still am using the EG Tech, but you can pick up my actual flashlight down in the description. You can see there we do have bearings. It looks like nylon, but it's the plastic cage around uh, the bearings, so it definitely is running on bearings. To my surprise, even with being a 2013 model, this, is, this was a new thing back then, or a pretty new thing. It does have the steel lock bar insert, which is doubling as the over treble stop. So yeah, in 2013, it was like, oh my gosh, that's crazy. Crazy, lots of great stuff, but it's still something that we expect to see on Titan on uh, frame locks um, in general in today's modern knife world. Okay, um, let's go ahead and do the hardware check. Get out my tools here real quick. Oh wait, we can't do that because everything's proprietary. You can still pick up the tools that'll work for 99% of folding knives down in my description if you want to. This uses the tri-wing screws and the thing here it, yeah it sucks um I, I hate not being able to take apart my knives but it is what it is if you want to pick up the tool for this periodically they are available on uh, different retailer sites blade hq i've got links for blade hq and uh, some other great retailers down below um but i just that's i don't like that i i mean I, I do like how the hardware looks the hardware looks awesome but here's the problem the pocket clip fits just fine we've got a little bit of play here and that's because these screws need to be tightened down just a little bit. I can't do that because I don't have the tool. Um, so that's frustrating. Any screw that comes loose, if I choose not to uh, use the tool, because I, I probably won't take this apart too much. I understand if you use it, you're going to want to take it apart. Maybe you're just curious. You want to take it apart, right? A lot of people do that. For me, I'm probably not going to take it apart unless I have bought the knife with the intention of customizing it from the get-go. Um, but if something comes loose, yeah, I definitely want to be able to tighten it back down. And I can't do that because it's proprietary hardware, unless I want to spend money to get an extra tool. So that's kind of a downside. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, everything seems to be in place, uh, holding together well. So it is definitely solid in terms of build. Let's go ahead and do carry profile. Thickness up against the Spyderco Pair 3. It is definitely thicker. This is aluminum uh, with a uh, titanium frame lock, and then you have a pretty thick stock of steel. Everything's pretty thick, right? How about height and length up against the Spyderco PM2 and Para 3, two knives that have awkward carry profiles nobody ever seems to complain about? It is definitely longer and taller in some places than both the PM2 and Para 3, and it has a huge flipper tap. This is not going to be a comfortable item for everybody to carry in their pocket. It is big. Uh, it is thick. Unless you regularly carry big, thick, heavy knives, this is probably not going to be your thing. Let's go ahead and get a measurement of blade stock thickness. I'm going to guess that this is 165 thousandths, something like that. Let's go ahead and take a look. Yeah, 160 thousandths, weight, 7.62 ounces. That is, uh, I'm somebody who likes big knives. Um, I carry a full-size knife and my preferences for weight fall in between about four and six and a half ounces. This is aluminum and a thick chunk of 154 cm with a titanium uh, sort of integrated uh, frame lock there because you wouldn't want to use aluminum as a lock. It's big and thick and heavy and it is outside the range of an item that I would want to carry on my person every single day. And again, as somebody who carries large knives, um, you know, me telling you guys that, I can tell you that most people aren't going to be comfortable carrying this. But it is cool, definitely. It's just way over that mark. I consider normal or practical for a lot of people. Um, did we talk about everything? Action. Yeah, yeah, we did all that. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about the anatomy here. So this knife comes in a lot of different configurations. Um, they Different colors of aluminum. Uh, you've got serrated and non-serrated blades. You've got different coatings. Um, you've got uh, apocalyptic finishes, like, right? Microtech does a lot of different stuff. So if you're looking at this and you're like, that's not really my cup of tea. I might like it in a different color, different finish. Like, I mean, if they, if they were available, you know, 
if they were all in stock, uh, you would find that they have a ton. In fact, you can still go look if you want to. I'll still have the links down below, the out of stock links. Um, yeah, they've got like a bajillion different configurations. Um, and then there was another thing that I wanted to say. Oh yeah, they have a, um, the kill switch version of this is essentially the same thing, but it's an automatic variant. Um, uh, so yeah, that's the other variant there. So you have a lot of choices here and that's neat. They have these little grip inserts down here that, I mean, truthfully, I don't feel like I'm interacting with them too much, just gripping the knife. I think it's more of an aesthetic thing, but if you find a, yourself in a situation where your fingers are able to actually dig into that during use, then you'll find that there's a little bit of traction. The nice thing is, is that if you don't need them, they're kind of out of the way. Ergonomically, I really enjoy this. This has very Strider-esque ergonomics, which means the lock-in up here is, in my opinion, the most comfortable place to hold this. Um, plenty of room to get your finger in there. There's basically no chance you're going to run up on the blade. And even if you do slip over that little point, you're running into the sharpening choil. First, your subconscious will give you that warning. Back here, it's okay. It's less comfortable. The pocket clip is definitely a hot spot back here. If I was going to use this knife, I'd probably hold it like this, right? Holding it like this, look how far away you are from the cutting edge. Uh, up here, you're much closer and it's much more controlled, much more comfortable. Jimping's not super aggressive or anything like that. Uh, all the way around, everything's knocked down pretty good. Um, the uh, sorry about that. All the way, uh, all the way around, everything's knocked down pretty well. Um, I wouldn't say that anything is sharp or anything like that. It's really just the pocket clip that's kind of sharp. Also, the corners of the flipper tab can be a bit sharp. And holding the knife right here, you know, I guess I can feel that just a little bit. Most of the time, interacting with the flipper tab, you're just going to be pulling down on it, so it's not really that big of a deal, right? Um, this has uh, thumb studs that you can use to deploy it, um, kind of. It's, it's okay. You can definitely do the reverse flick and forward flick with those thumb studs. They double as over travel. I'm sorry, not over travel stops. Uh, uh, external stops, which is a, that is definitely a um, uh, construction feature that I like. Um, it mitigates pressure away from the pivot if you're going to use this thing really hard. Considering that um, Microtech... Uh, it's sort of, um, they, they make a lot of designs that are meant for soldiers and definitely meant for hard use. And it's not just flash. These knives really can be used hard in extreme circumstances. I appreciate little design elements like that. I think that in terms of a frame lock, uh, or liner lock, that is definitely a stronger construction than, um, you know, just a stop pin back here. So I, I like that. I also like how big and oversized they are without really getting in the way of anything because of the area of the forward choil. And the uh, sharpening choil, you know, being so large, yeah, it takes away from the cutting edge, but it allows that um, thumb stud to be as large as, as it is and easy to um, engage. I mean, like, it's kind of awkwardly placed, but because it's so big and it has those little interesting traction points on it, you, you definitely can find a way to engage with that. But, you know, regardless of the size, it doesn't matter because everything's out of the way of the cutting path, right? And you still have three and a quarter inches of uh, cutting edge. That's cool. Definitely the most striking feature of the blade is or of the knife is the blade. Um, we have a compound uh, grind here. The interesting thing is it looks a little bit different, a more, more geometric, because normally these compound grinds are hollow and then flat. This is actually flat and then flat, which is why you're seeing this extra little triangle here, this little angular area. I kind of like that. It, this one back here is a little bit thinner because the drop starts a little higher. This is thick. This is ax thick right here. None of the edge is overly slicey. We have an enormous flat that runs out about 90% the length of the blade. Even though there is a swedge here, you can see there's a monstrous amount of thickness down to the tip. You can see there, there's just no, I mean, this is, it's thick behind the edge. It'll cut, it'll do what you need it to do. This thing is more of like a, you know, it's, it's more of an all purpose sort of luxury tactical cutting tool um, that will, it will do your EDC cutting tests. It'll do things probably outside of what it's meant to do in terms of a knife, right? But the blade is more of just like a flashy, really cool blade. It's very tall, very chunky, right? I'm attracted to it, regardless of the fact that a lot, you know, the, the design choices here for the blade is just, it's outside of the, the realm of overly practical or practical really in any sense. But it it's cool, you know, I appreciate that. In this case, we have sort of a two-tone, kind of satin, kind of tumbled, right? I think it's mostly, it's just like horizontal lines here and vertical grind lines here. Um, I like the blade. What I don't like is what Microtech does with every single knife that it just is all this crap all over it. Serial number, dock, and then the MA, which is probably manual action, Microtech and USA and 154 CM. And then on the other side, there's nothing. Why not just Microtech 154 CM? And if you need to put the serial number, put it back here. Um, I know it's a dock, 
because I bought it and I spent, I mean, if I, if I did, I would have purchased it and spent a lot of money for it. I know what it is. Um, I don't, you know, I don't like that big thing that Microtech does, but okay, you know, they do it, whatever. Not, not really that big of it. It's not taking away from the utility or anything like that. Um, let's go ahead and get back here. We have a, I've just got a really cool backspacer, honestly. I like how the backspacer looks. A little bit of jumping here. Lanyard loop, which is not, I mean, it's, it's not necessarily in the way. Um, we have a uh, screw that's it's actually in the way of the pocket clip. The pocket clip itself, even if that screw wasn't there, it still wouldn't be deep carry. But this is really shallow carry. There is a lot of that knife sticking up out of your pocket. I think the pocket clip is a weird design and totally unnecessary. And they still have, as far as I know, they still have the same pocket clip in the new ones. It's just weird. And it's, you know, it, it holds true to Strider t tradition because the, you know, on the one that I've got and, and regular Striders, the pocket clip is just not really in a good place. You know, it's the same thing here. It's so much of the knife sticking up out of your pocket, which makes an already big and clunky knife feel even bigger and clunkier when you have so much of it sticking. I don't want so much of the knife sticking. I don't care so much about how the pocket clip looks on the outside of my pants versus how much of the knife is hanging out of my pocket. Um, on top of that, because of the shape of the bill here, it is definitely a hot spot. That is going to dig into your hands. It's pointy and big. Right, it's easy to get in and out of the pants, and it does hold pretty well. But this could have been deeper. This screw, I don't know. It really need. I mean, the, the whole thing it just begs to be moved way up here and just carry deeper. You know, I think three screws would have been fine. <laughs> and hold that in just fine. I don't know that it needed to be like that, but okay. It does accomplish a certain aesthetic that I think a lot of people will find pleasing. And so the pocket clip does go with the design. There's at least that much going for it. Um, this is a titanium, uh, you know, sort of integrated lock that's screwed in to the aluminum from underneath. Um, and that's fine. You know, you get all the strength of a titanium frame lock. This has a huge um, uh, steel lock bar insert that's probably locking up at about 50%. We can see the mark there. It's actually less than that. It's maybe like, it just it looks 50%. It's maybe it's like 40%. Um, but it is absolutely 100% solid, which is what I'd expect. And the blade is, I've been flipping it a lot. This did this earlier and I actually used my, th I don't know if it's going to do this for me now. Let's see if I can maybe twist it back. Is it going to come over? Eh, it's close, right? If I had the tool, I'm sure that I could get it centered, but eh, I can't judge this one because it's from 2013. I'd say it's holding up pretty well, right? It doesn't really look like it's been used too much. There's a couple of little marks right there. A um, couple of little marks under the pocket clip. The blade's got a couple of little tiny areas. Yeah, there's been some cutting with this thing. You know, has it been used super hard for the last uh, seven years? Probably not. It's been, looks to be well taken care of, you know, but I imagine it's been flipped a crap load and the blade doesn't seem to be coming off too much. So again, you know, not going to really judge the centering. Lockup's good. Everything's good. It really speaks to Microtech's continuous quality. Um, everything appears solid even after years. 154 cm too another reason to like that steel for anybody who doesn't know 154 cm is my favorite steel that or cpm 154 it's it's obviously stainless enough there's not a hint of corrosion on this entire thing right i mean we can maybe we can i don't know if it's been you know babied or oiled every once a week or something like that but it's held up all right it's easy to sharpen um it uh, holds an edge for a while like that i think it was a smart move moving to l max because for what they want for this, which is still something like 350 to 375 bucks when they're in stock. Yeah, people don't like to see 154 CM on a knife like that. You know, it's understandable. We want what we perceive to be the super steels, right? A lot of people really will just want M390 at that price range, but S35VN, M390, L Max, whatever. You know, if I was looking for a knife like this and I saw that price tag, that's right about what I'd expect to see on there. So Little things that I can nitpick. Again, it's huge. It's gigantic. There's an appeal there, and I honestly, I can see the appeal. This is really neat. In fact, one of my dream knives is actually an MSG, which is a another Strider and Marfio in collaboration. I'd want a custom SNG, which in a lot of ways is very similar to this, other than the blade just being much taller on this guy um, and the handle shape being a little bit less Strider-esque and more straight, right? doesn't have the same um, big external stops or anything like that. Um, this is aluminum and uh, at best case scenario, L Max, and it has the integrated frame lock. Um, it's made in the United States, right? Um, the uh, that, That's all good, good stuff. 
Um, the uh, pocket clip is, I do not like the pocket clip. That's really going to be rough on your hands during use and it doesn't carry deep at all. The biggest problem with this thing is that, it is, is that in Microtech knives in general is that they use proprietary hardware, which is not such a big deal until you have to adjust something, tighten something back down because stuff will back out. If you're going to use this knife, stuff backs out. Of it. so it's just what screws do, even if they've got Loctite on them, right? Um, so I want to be able to adjust it. I don't like that. Another big problem, I think, is probably the price. Ah, even if, you know, a brand new one of these, even if these did come back in stock, right, and they're in LMAX or M390, would I pay $350, $375 bucks for this knife? No. There's a $300, $300, I think, and in many cases can get you a knife that is made in the United States that is arguably just as good, if not better than this, and define better how you will. will. But... I don't know. This is cool. I like it for the Strider, er the Strider Ergos. I like it for the, the look of the blade, right? The action is very impressive, even on a 2013 model. It has a lot of elements that honestly would be surprising to me. Um, or, you know, if, in 2013, I've been blown away by a lot of the elements here that were non-existent on many other knives and, and oftentimes for years uh, leading up to where we are now. Um, but uh, this it's just a little bit clunky and awkward. This is cool and it's definitely going to appeal to a lot of people. And if you choose to buy this, you are going to be happy. Uh, you're, you're probably going to be happy with the quality. Um, and, uh, you know, if you really like Strider and like overbuilt knives and you like Microtex quality, then yeah, you're probably going to really, really enjoy this. If you're looking for an EDC knife, right? You're trying to like get something that's ultra competitive for the price range and get the best thing. This probably isn't going to be for you. Um, in fact, it's probably not going to be for most people. So there are parts of this that you, that people can enjoy. And there are definitely things that people won't enjoy, but overall for me, this wasn't my favorite thing in the whole world. And it's definitely not something that I can recommend to a lot of people, but it certainly is cool. Thank you so much. Once again, uh, Mike for sending this and for donating it to the channel. I cannot tell you how much that means to me guys. That's going to be pretty much it for today's overview slash review. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching everybody and have a great day.